Hey everybody, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. Schuler Ruler here. In today's video, we are taking a look at determining the opacities of single conductor cables in a tray. In this, we are using the 2021 Canadian Electrical Code Book, and we are referencing rules 4-004, subrules 22, 23, and 24. If you're using the 2018 code book, the rules are 4004, 23, 24, and 25. One of the changes in the 2021 code book was the elimination of table 39, and 4004, subrule 22 in the 2018 code book was the rule that allowed us, permitted us to use that table 39. That has since been deleted, so the rules have shifted back to 22, 23, and 24. That being said, let's get to it. So the first thing that we're going to take a look at here is what is the allowable ampacity of these individual conductors as they're laid in a raceway, like a tray for example. One of the things we need to keep in mind is the closer those conductors get together, the more there is mutual heating in between the two conductors due to things like magnetic fields, which are reducing the allowable ampacities. So the further apart we can be, the better. The more current we're going to be able to carry through these conductors. So looking at our top example, if we take a look at the space between our conductors, we have roughly around two times the largest diameter of the conductors in between. That is what our spacing is, or if we were thinking about it in a percentage, this would be around 200% the largest diameter of the conductors. That allows for plenty of space for cooling of that mutual heating. It allows for lots of space for those magnetic fields. They don't interact with each other. Therefore, the values that we're actually gonna pull from the tables are the actual allowable ampacities for the conductors. So for this example right here, the rule that we're gonna reference is actually 4-004 subrule 22, which tells me if I have 100% or more spacing of the largest diameter of the cable in between my conductors, I'm permitted to go straight to table one if we're using copper, and I'm allowed to select my conductor based off that. So we're gonna just say with these examples, we're gonna say that these are all 1000 kc mil. Right, we're gonna say they are RW90 XLPE. So we're gonna say that we have 90 degree terminations on both ends of this conductor as well as a 90 degree insulation. According to 4004, sub rule 22, it tells me at table one, if I am using the 90 degree column, a 1000 KC mil RW90 conductor is permitted to carry 1055 amps. That is the allowable ampacity of this conductor. Now there are things that can reduce the allowable ampacity of this conductor like external heating factors, things like that, ambient temperature, proximity to other conductors. But in this case, because we're far enough apart, we're far enough away from these other conductors that mutual heating is not occurring. We are permitted to pull that value straight from table one. So 1,055 amps is what we're permitted to carry in this situation. Now, the next example that we have here, if you look, the spacing between our conductors, I would say it is less than 100%, right? So less than one times the diameter of the largest cable, but it looks like it's probably more than 25% to the diameter of the largest conductor there. So this is actually going to use 4004 sub rule 23, which tells me I am still permitted to take my ampacities from table one. However, there is one correction that I must keep in mind because they're starting to get closer together, that mutual heating is gonna become an issue. So while I'm permitted to take my ampacities from table one, Right, if we were still to use the same 90 degree termination, I must also apply the correction factors from table 5D. And what that's gonna do is reduce the allowable current that my conductor can carry based off those external factors. In this case, the external factor being the proximity to that other current carrying conductor. So based off table 5D, if I go check out table 5D, I have three conductors on one layer, that tells me that table 5D, I have a correction factor of 0.87, or 87%, roughly. What that means is I can carry 87% of what it tells me I'm allowed to on table one. And on table one, we determined that it was 1,055 amps. Well, because of this proximity to other conductors now, 
I can no longer carry 1,055 amps, I can carry 87% of that, which works out to roughly 917.85 amps. That is actually the allowable ampacity of my 1000 KC mil dog because it's close enough to those other conductors. And if we look at our third example, our third example, they're jammed right up tight to each other, right? We are, in this case, less than 25% spacing, right? If I check out again, 4-004, now we're dealing with sub rule 24 where it says if they're all jammed together, you now go straight to table two, right? As opposed to using the table one, we were permitted to use table one because of the spacing between the conductors. But now, because of 4004 sub rule 24, they're saying we now must go straight to table two. And again, we're gonna use the 90 degree column because we're still gonna stick with those 90 degree terminations. And it tells me now 1000 KC mil is actually only rated for 615 amps based off table two. Things that can still affect this, if I had more than three conductors that were close proximity to each other, I would actually be required to use table 5C to further reduce the allowable ampacity of that conductor. So you can see just the proximity to those other cables significantly reduces the current carrying ability of a conductor. The next thing we're going to do is take a look at a more of a real world problem where we start with a given load and we determine what size conductor is going to be required based off these factors. So we'll still use the same three scenarios where we have 200% spacing, less than 100%, but more than 25%, and then no spacing observed. I'm still going to leave the rules up here because those are important to observe. 4-004, sub rule 22 is used where 100% or more spacing is in between the conductors there. Uh, when we have more than 25%, but not more than 100%, we're looking at still 4004 sub rule 23. And then down here, 4004 sub rule 24, where we have less than 25%. So, just to give you some information to work with here, we are going to start with a 415 amp load supplied from these three conductors, right? And just to give you some additional information on that, we're going to say they are, again, RW90XLPE. We're going to say that it is 90 degree termination temperatures everywhere. We need to determine what size conductor in each. Right, so three different examples. Again, we have three conductors that are spaced significantly far apart. We have three conductors in example two that are a little bit closer and then example three where they're touching each other, right? What is the difference? Starting with the first example, we're going to say if I have a 415 amp load, we know using 4004 sub rule 22 that I'm permitted to go straight to table one in the 90 degree column. And I am permitted to select from that a 250 KC mill. There are no external circumstances reducing the allowable ampacity of my conductor. We're safe to do that. My second example, we're going to do the same thing. We're still going to go to table one, but before we go to table one, I need a conductor that can handle that 415 amp load with that external heat from the mutual heating between the conductors taken into account as well. The easiest way to do that, as opposed to going to table one and just start multiplying by 0.87, might take you two or three shots to get the right conductor. We're just going to divide the load by the correction factor that will artificially inflate the required ampacity of my conductor to accommodate for that extra heat. So we're going to go like this, 415 amps divided by, again, 0.87 because table 5D tells me that I have a 0.87 correction factor if I have three conductors in a single layer on a tray. This gives me a required ampacity for my conductor of 477 amps. This is now the required ampacity that I take with me to table one in the 90 degree column because we're still less than 100% but more than 25%. I'm still permitted to grab my values from table one. This tells me that in this case, we're gonna have to go with a 300 KC mil because that 300 KC mil at 87% can still carry that 415 amp load. My third example, my third example is where we see a significant increase in size. So based off 4004 sub rule 24, it tells me that I am required now to go straight to table two for this. So we have our 415 amp load still. We are required to go to 
table two, again in the 90 degree column. And from the 90 degree column, I am now required to purchase a 500 kc mill. To accommodate for the fact that those conductors are all jammed together, that mutual heating is significantly reducing the current carrying ability of my conductor. So instead of giving us a correction factor, they're like, now you are stuck with using table two, which has significantly lower values per conductor than you would have originally grabbed from table one. Hopefully this helps clarify how to utilize that 4004 subrule 22, 23, and 24. As I mentioned in the beginning there, this was previously 23, 24, and 25 from the 2018 code. So the calculations are still identical. If you are still using the 2018 code, just know that you're shifting your reference rules one forward for the 2018 code. As always, hit that like button, hit the little bell button for future notifications, and hit the subscription button so you don't miss out on any future upcoming videos. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.